Hello, Kenton community. My name is Sabatino Sumato. I am your superintendent, and this is your very, very important weekly connection. So, uh, folks, I want to give you the format for this weekly connection because it is a very long weekly connection. We're going to go through a lot of specifics, as promised the other night in our board meeting, and uh, I'm going to bring you through some facts, uh, also uh, some procedures as we move forward. Before we get into the presentation for this evening, I just want to bring us back to the thinking. The thinking that led us to uh, my announcement on Tuesday evening at the board meeting and uh, the thinking that led us to where we are today as a district. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, just like many of you, uh, I am just as confused during the pandemic uh, educators are just as confused during the pandemic as everyone else in our community. And what led me, just to reiterate, what led me to the decision that we made is that we are expert as edu educators in the field of education. I cannot start to begin to be subjective in other fields. And what I mean by that is uh, I think it would be a, a big mistake to ever let subjective feelings get in my way of the decision-making process that we have in this district. So with that being said, I have to trust, and I will always trust, the experts in other fields, the experts in medicine, uh, the experts in our government. So what led us to this decision is absolutely following the guidelines that our experts have provided so that we can expertly educate our kids. And that's where we are today. Following those guidelines from the experts, we've heard, we know that schools are safe. We know that the guidance is very clear. The data is very clear. The governor shared data again today, Friday, um, with uh, where they're seen as a, as a government and as a state, where we're seen as a state, where the most spread comes from. And we know that as community, we have a, a lot to work on. Uh, the, I believe the governor calls it living room spread is the biggest spread right now. I, I think the number was even 74% of the cases they have data that are showing come during living room spread. So we have to continue our hard work as a community. Um, but I just wanted to reiterate, if you want more details about all the timeline that brought us to this point, I encourage you to watch the board meeting from the other night. During the update, I reiterated a little bit more in detail of what brought us to this point. So for tonight, we're going to have four major sections that we're focusing on. We're going to talk about the testing program. Remember, everything tonight is about testing. I indicated that the other night. Tonight is testing. Um, the testing program, we're going to give an overview. Then we're going to actually talk again about the test itself. Within this video, there are two different occasions that I'm going to show other videos. This is one of the points where I'm actually, when we get into the tests and the testing operation, I'm going to actually show at two separate times two different videos. One video of um, a child uh, actually going through the test, the testing procedures in our district, and then also uh, the consent and sign up. Uh, procedures. We're going to actually show how people sign up at the elementary level for testing. Um, we're going to go through the testing operation for both, uh, actually for all three, elementary testing, secondary testing, and I'm even, since this is for our entire community, I'm going to talk a little bit to our staff about the testing procedures that they can expect. And then finally, we're going to answer and land on some frequently asked questions. So without further ado, let's get going. You'll see on this first slide, and uh, excuse the fact that I'm going to be reading a lot because I want to make sure that we have the data and the procedures front and center. You'll see on this first slide, it talks about the testing program and the purpose. To meet the state's 20% random testing requirement to resume in-person attendance in an orange zone. I need to reiterate with our community, folks, we are not a medical testing facility. We are not your primary care provider. Um, and why I'm saying that is because our objective is not that we are testing our entire community as a medical or as Erie County Department of Health would do so. We are, we are doing the testing, performing the testing to make sure 
that we are following the guidance. Remember, objectively following the guidance, following the procedures, and completing the guidance requirements to be open as a school district. So that's what that 20% random testing is. So you'll see that first bullet. It isn't a way to test symptomatic individuals. Symptomatic individuals should never be on school grounds. Folks, if you do not feel well or you're showing any of the symptoms of COVID-19, you should never report to our schools. No one should ever come to our schools or one of our testing sites in our schools because they feel that they have COVID-19 and they're going to use this test to uh, figure out if they truly do or they don't. Remember, this random testing is to keep schools in session. If you're in that circumstance where you're truly symptomatic and you feel that you are COVID positive, you should be seeking your health care provider, your primary care physician, and you should be working with Erie County Department of Health. I want to be very clear on that. This isn't a way to determine whether those directed to quarantine or isolate can return to school. So here's a scenario. Uh, Mr. Samato, uh, my family, my, my child, uh, or a staff member, I've been told to quarantine. I want to take the test so that I could get out of quarantine. You need to work with the Erie County Department of Health in order to do that. Once again, we're staying very consistent. The purpose of our testing is to meet the requirements of the 20% random sampling that we need per month under the orange zone. It, uh, it isn't an alternative to county state testing. Uh, we, uh, we already talked about that. Folks, I'm not trying to be negative about that. I'm trying to stay consistent. This is what we're doing as a school district. Once again, we've received our LSL, our limited service laboratory license. We've also ordered our tests. We have our tests in stock here secured in our district, and that is how we're moving forward. Now, uh, speaking of the tests, we're going to focus a little bit on this test again. The Abbott Binex Now Nasal Rapid Test. For all testing, the district will use this test. It's a very quick, simple, gentle testing method. It's not nearly as invasive as other tests are. And this test consists of a swab, very similar to a Q-tip, which circles the inside of the very lowest part of the nose. And it's the very lowest part of the nose. Nurses will ensure that quality control measured measures are always followed. And now I know that this is a lot of information. This is a part of the presentation that I really wanted you to have a chance to watch the video and see one of our wonderful expert nurses in action, as well as one of our wonderful kiddos going through the test. So take a watch. Hi, Kenton families. I'm Sabatino Samato, your superintendent. And this is a, an instructional video. That's right. And the purpose of this video is to really familiarize our families and our community with the COVID-19 testing that's going to be taking place in our schools. So today I have a wonderful one of our tops in the district, Nurse Sharon, with us. Hi, everybody. And Nurse Sharon is going to bring us through that testing, and then we're going to pause for a moment, and I have some volunteers that I'll bring up to actually demonstrate the testing. Nurse Sharon? So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to explain to you what you're going to see when you come into the room. Um, the nurses are going to be wearing their masks, their gowns, gloves. Some nurses may choose to wear goggles like these. Some nurses may choose to wear a shield like this. We do not mean to scare anybody, it's just for your safety, and I promise we are smiling underneath these masks. <laughs> now, the tests. The tests are these little square boxes, okay? Um, and then we're going to use a swab. Now the swabs look like this. We're going to use this swab and very gently put it into either side of your nose and make five little quick circles. Gentle. We are not touching your brain, I promise. And then we're going to take the swab. We're going to insert it into the test. Close the box. And that's all there is to it. It's really very simple. That's great, Nurse Sharon. Thanks for really bringing us through that. And, and folks, when we say that this testing is simple, it really is simple. I know Nurse Sharon talked about the swab going into the nose. 
And it, it really is, I start to think about it like a fingernail, the, a fingernail length into the tip of your nose and that's it. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna actually bring up some volunteers to help us. I'd like to welcome our first volunteer and Eve. If Eve could come up and help us out. So Eve, why don't you introduce yourself to everybody? Hi, I'm Eve, I'm an eighth grader and I go to Kenmore West. Eighth grader at Kenmore West. Thank you so much for helping us today, Eve. So today, Nurse Sharon is gonna work with you on the test. I'm gonna turn it over to Nurse Sharon so you can work with Nurse Sharon. Okay, what did you say your name was? Eve. All right, can you put your name on your test? I'm going to put some magic drops into the box. Okay, Eve, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this swab. I'm going to very gently put it into either side of your nose. I'm going to make five tiny little circles on either side, and that's all we're going to do, okay? You ready? All right, honey, that's it. You are all done. And that was it. Eve, tell me about it. How was it? It just tickled. It was a tickle. Okay, I, li I like that explanation. It was a tickle. So nothing, no pain, nothing hurt. And folks, that, that's what this is. So this test is, is done pretty quickly. You're going to see that Nurse Sharon then sets a timer. And uh, we wait for the test uh, for 15 minutes. All families in the event of a positive will be notified right away. If you're a family that's coming in at, for an elementary student on a Wednesday, you would actually leave at this time, and then we would notify you in the event of a positive. For kids inside schools, for our secondary schools that get tested especially, the, the child will be tested, and then they'll stay with the nurse for the 15-minute duration until the test is done, and then they'll be sent up back up to class as long as they are negative. So that's it. So thank you very much for joining us. You can see this process is going to be very simple, and I know we can do this all together. Thanks, Eve. Remember, Kenton families, it's very important that we're always proactive in making sure that we stay safe. One way is we're always going to be wearing masks. Another way, we encourage people to always wash their hands with good hygiene. And finally, always make sure that we're maintaining social distancing. So thank you very much, Nurse Sharon and Eve, our student from Kenmore West. You are a great help and great assistance. Folks, we also have another video of uh, another helper, TJ, who's a younger student, that you could actually watch TJ's video going through that if you wanted to watch it with one of your students at home so that we could see uh, a TJ, I believe, is in fourth grade, and we have an eighth grader that are both doing uh, and performing this test. So now this next slide, testing operations on Wednesdays for elementary. By the numbers. A minimum required number of tests, 20% a month. And we have on there ranges from 11 to 23 tests per week, depending on the school. So folks, that's per week. Remember, 20% of tests per month. And we um, look at no more, no less than 10% every two weeks. If we go a little bit more than 10% every two weeks, I'm okay, but we cannot go less. The, the minimum is 10%. We're trying to stick at that 10% mark for every two weeks, 20% over the month. And of course, the size of the school will, will be that determining factor. This next bullet has caused some confusion. I really wanna spend some time on it. If there are nine or more positive tests during the one month span, the school will need to transition for fully remote or to fully remote. So let's talk about that. And then we'll talk about what's in the uh, uh, parentheses in a moment, but First, that nine positive tests are school specific. And that's over the entire 20% sample for the month. So we're very clear about that. It's not nine over the two weeks, it's nine over that four week period, that 20% random sample that is tested. That's number one. This next part, 3% or higher for a 300 plus sample size. So let me give you an example. Our, let's say our biggest school is 1,000 in-person students. 20% of that 1,000 is 200. That, that 200 is our sample size. We don't need to worry about the 3%. We're under that 300 number, magic number threshold, so we go by that number of nine positive
positive cases over the month. Right now, we do not have any schools in our system that would exceed that 300 sample size over that entire month. And remember, this is school by school. It does not look at the district as a whole. It looks at schools individually because this is about school testing, not overall district testing, school testing. No student or staff will be tested more than one time per month. Now, the great thing is another video that I'm gonna show you soon is how you get involved in the testing. So that, let's get into that because this next section about consent is very important. Complete the electronic consent form. Now remember, we're talking about elementary right now. Complete the electronic consent form. Access it at ktufsd.org forward slash consent if you haven't done so already. This is the same consent form that we sent out right um, uh, a little while before Thanksgiving, right in the beginning of November, um, when we are first finding out about the uh, yellow zones and looking at the fact that we would have to do testing. So if you've already done it, you're okay. Now the big thing is, question I get, Samato, can I change my mind? Either can I opt into testing or can I say, no, I no longer want to test? And the answer is yes, you can. All you do is go back in and fill out another consent form. If you filled out yes before, you could change it. Now this next one say no. If you filled out no before and you're saying yes after all the ways that we've tweaked this, this and changed this, and after the videos you've watched, then absolutely go in and, and fill out a new one and say yes. We will use whatever the most recent consent form is, whether it's yes or no. So that's important to know. But here's the key, folks. Under these new requirements, it's 20% a month. Some things that have changed. People are not kept out of school if they do not consent to testing. But folks, we need everyone, as many people as possible, to consent to testing. We need this. I can't have a, a small percentage of families um, saying that, yes, I, I'm going to consent to testing, and then those are the people that are always tested over and over again. First of all, a family, a student cannot sign up more than once per month. Secondly, the more that we have to pull from in that random sample, the better. So I really need everybody, that's that partnership that we've always talked about. We need everybody to do their part. We change the testing at elementary to alleviate some of the concerns that our youngest students would have to do this testing without a parent. So I really want to reiterate, we need people to sign up for the testing. The high school testing we'll talk about in a second, same procedure, same need, but focusing on elementary right now, we've changed it so that parents can be present. Please sign up and you, you will only be in that random if you're on and you give consent. Parents or guardians will accompany their children for testing in elementary K through four. So now this next part, and we're gonna get into this video very shortly, let's talk about this elementary sign-up process. Testing will take place every Wednesday at your child's individual school beginning this coming up Wednesday, December 16th. And there's a sign-up process that right when we're releasing this video to the public, we're gonna be releasing this sign-up process as well. Elementary school parents and guardians will receive a link via text message and email to sign up for a time slot at their child's school. The sign up form through Sign Up Genius will include available time slots for the four Wednesdays in the testing period. I'm asking for your child, for each of your children that are in elementary, you're only selecting one time slot. The, the system's pretty smart and it, it, it won't let you select more than one uh, time slot, but uh, if it does miss that, we're going to have to then narrow it down to only one uh, one test for um, for that uh, each individual child. Parents and guardians can only select one time slot. There you go in the next bullet. And if you have more than one child, uh, you can bring them as well. So this question comes up. Uh, so Samato, I have an elementary student. Can I bring my middle schooler with me? Um, can I bring my high schooler with me? You can. You can. I don't want you to feel like you can't. Um, and, and sure, we will also be able to provide them a test at that time. But folks, I do want to stick as much to the guidance as we can with that 20%. Please understand that. And we have procedures for our secondary students as well. So um, 
absolutely, but don't feel like you need to bring your middle schooler or high schooler with you to that testing. And we're also trying to make sure that we're sticking with social distancing guidelines and all the guidelines. That's, that's why we set our testing up with time slots. So if we stick to as much as we can with that elementary student, that's, that's even better. But absolutely, we will provide that test uh, for you if uh, you did uh, have other students with you at that time uh, that are our Kenton students. A reminder, this is only for our Kenton students, and Wednesdays are reserved for elementary Kenton students. So now I, I want to show you the test, and we have the wonderful help from... Uh, our um, public relations specialist, Mr. Patrick Finelli, he's going to actually walk you through a video that shows all of our elementary, this is for our elementary parents, to sign up for those Wednesdays. Remember, you're only signing up for one Wednesday from out of those four that are shown and only one time slot. And when they're full, they're full. So here's Patrick Finelli. Hello, my name is Patrick Finelli. I'm the Community Relations Coordinator for the Kenton School District, and I will be providing a very brief demonstration of how to schedule a COVID-19 test at your child's elementary school. I'm going to be walking you through this process on a laptop, but it's the same um, on a mobile device and on a tablet. You will receive an email and a text message to an electronic sign-up form through a platform called Sign Up Genius. Each link is specific to your child's school. So Edison families will receive the Edison link, Holmes families will receive the Holmes link and so on. You simply click the link and that will take you to the sign up form. You don't need to log in and you don't need to create an account. At the very top, you're gonna to see a link to the consent form. Now a quick note about the consent form. Um, if you've already completed the consent form, uh, you're all set. If you haven't, the district does need to have your consent on file to test your child. So if you haven't completed the form, please do so uh, one form for each child. If you've already completed it, but you wish to change your consent, for example, if you, if you, were, if you selected no and you wish to select yes, um, it's no problem, simply submit a new form um, for the child. Only your most recent form will be referenced. On this sign up form, you will see time slots, um, those that are already reserved and those that are available over four different Wednesdays. Uh, now remember, testing will be spread out over four different Wednesdays and each child can only be tested once per month. So you will only be able to choose one time slot. If all of the time slots all have already been reserved, um, unfortunately that does mean there are no more available spots. Our capacity to test is limited. But if you do find a time slot that is available and is convenient for you, you simply select the box next to sign up. And at the bottom, uh, click the submit and sign up button. And that will take you to the final step in the process. Just follow the directions you see on screen. So provide your name, first name and last name. And this is the name of the parent and guardian. Provide your email address. Don't worry about the comment field, scroll down confirm that you've completed the consent form, review this very important information, click the box next to acknowledge, and then click sign up now. And that's it, you've reserved your time slot and your school will be prepared to test your child on this day at this time. So please make a note of it and plan on being at the school for your scheduled slot. You should receive an email confirmation and you have the option to add it to a calendar. Um, and that's all there is to it. If at any point you have any trouble with the form, you can email web underscore help at ktufsd.org. Once again, that's web underscore help at ktufsd.org. Thank you. So thank you very much, Patrick. We really appreciate all the work you did to put that together. I'm still focusing on elementary procedures because we're starting this Wednesday. Just to walk you through, folks, what to expect. When you arrive at your school, you report to door one. Be prepared to show your driver's license for the single point of entry Raptor system. That's for all of our visitors that come to our schools. You will be directed from that single point of entry to the nurse's office, and then the nurse will confirm your identity 
and confirm that we have your consent on file. Please be sure that you've, con that you've completed that consent. You'll notice in Patrick's video, it talked about um, if you have not completed consent, you could click there and it'll bring you right to the consent form. It is important, even though you're bringing your child in, that consent needs to be completed prior to coming. So please do that. The nurse will conduct the test and then you'll be able to leave immediately after the test is completed. So the elementary level, because school's not going on on that Wednesday in person, it's asynchronous schooling, you'll actually, as soon as you get that test administered, you're gonna leave right away. So plan on being at that school for probably 10 minutes, um, anywhere from five to 15 minutes, I think is a safe bet, but it's gonna be a very quick process. And once again, it's just a small tickle. These are not the deep tests that anyone should be afraid of. Um, and, and you've seen in the video, Eve was a perfect example. To continue on with our elementary Wednesdays, test results will be available 15 minutes after the test. So the nurse you saw in the instructional video, the nurse sets up a timer, checks to see if a positive or negative result. And folks, if you're a negative result, we will not be contacting you. If you're a positive result, you're gonna know within that half hour after you completed the test because we're gonna call you right away so that you know that your child is testing positive. So negative results will not be contacted. Positive results, we will contact you right away. All tests then are safely disposed of. And I want people to know what we do with that data. The test results and additional required data for the students and staff will actually be uploaded to the New York State Electronic Clinical Laboratory Reporting System, ECLAIRS, through the New York State Department of Health. This will be done manually right away for those who test positive. It will be done through a data import at the end of the day for those who test negative. So folks, this is something that we report to the state daily. Um, once again, if there is a positive, you would be informed right away. It should be a very quick, painless process for you at the elem Remember, we're focused on elementary right now, and we're about to go into secondary, but we really fulfilled that point of having a parent with us. Uh, the child gets to receive a test, the child gets tested, and you're able to move on uh, quickly as a family. So thank you very much for your cooperation. Our next part is secondary testing. So now our, our testing operations in secondary for our in-school testing operations. And you'll see in these next two sections, I'm gonna talk about secondary testing for students, and then I'm gonna talk about all of our staff testing. I, I feel it's important that not only our staff, but our community understand that our staff are also being tested. And it'll follow this format like you can see on this slide right now. Numbers, consent, and procedures. So numbers for secondary schools, as is, these are grades five through 12. Minimum number of required tests ranges from six to 13 per day, and the testing will take place Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, depending on the school. Students will only be tested once per month. So this is where the consent comes in. Folks at the secondary level, we really need your consent, and what we'll do is that we're gonna actually, well, I'll go through the procedure in a moment, but students will be called down. I want you to understand that six to 13 per day, what does that mean? So I use that number 1,000 already. Let's take one of our largest schools, 1,000 in-person students. 20% would be 200 for the month. If you're looking at, we have four weeks, then it would end up being 50 tests per week. Everybody I think is following me up to this point. We have four days, 50 divided by four. That's how we get our number that we would land on for that school. So that's why you get that range, depending on the size of the school, from six to 13 per day. So this is not a monumental task as long as we do it consistently over the month. And that's why that guidance uh, was changed um, at the state level to really look at 10% every two weeks, not just 20% over the entire month. 20% over the month, but 10% over two weeks, and then taking those two two-week increments. Procedures. Students will be selected for testing using the random sample function in Microsoft Excel. And then we'll, at the district level, make sure that that random sampling is done appropriately. We'll inform the nurses of who those students are. And then the nurses are going to um, set up a schedule for 
those students to be able to come down during that week. If And if the student is comfortable and willing. So just understand, if for some reason the child comes down and they say, uh-uh, I said I wanted to do this before, but I don't want to do it now, we're not going to force them to. But folks at home, I really am encouraging you, please talk to your kiddos about at the secondary level about how important it is that when we're consenting that we're going to follow through with this. And it really is. Show them that video. It's really no big deal. There is nothing that goes up high in their nose. I like to look at it. I use it in the video like like a fingernail length that goes up uh, the nose. That's just the tip of the Q-tip. Even though that Q-tip's long, it's only the tip of the Q-tip that's going in the, the very opening of the nostril. Um, if a, a, a student stays, this is the difference in secondary. In elementary, you do the test, you leave. In secondary, because the students are in school, the students would then uh, take the test and remain with the nurse, and they'll wait for the result of that test. If they're negative, they're going to be given a sheet of paper uh, that goes with them home uh, just to reinforce that the test was given and that they're negative. If they're positive, families will be informed immediately. Remember, a question has come up. Why are we not testing before they enter the school, Samato? I can understand the concern, folks. I can understand. But remember, we are not a medical facility. We are not. What we are trying to accomplish is the 20% testing as required by the guidelines. So what I'm going to ask you to do is if your child ever is symptomatic, don't send them to school. It has to be reiterated. We do the same thing with our staff. We say, do not come to work. That, that guidance we've been consistent with since the beginning of the school year, making sure that this is random selection, random testing of students and, uh, and of staff that are not symptomatic. Okay, the te If the test result is negative and positive, you can see those two bullets there. More information and folks will even focus more on secondary testing before we bring secondary back. And I want to reiterate about bringing secondary back and even elementary for that point. Folks, when this decision is made, we all have to be prepared as a community that any of this can change at any time. So secondary, even though your uh, date is out there, um, we will continue to evaluate the guidance and the data inside of our schools. The hard thing during this pandemic is that anything can change at any given moment. We know we were in that position with one of our high schools earlier this year, and I had to say we are, we are going to be moving to remote with, for that high school for a given time because of the data in that high school. So, And that was way before, or, or not way before, but before we were into these orange zones and different things of that nature. So please understand that I'm not saying that we may never be in that in the future. That's the nature of the pandemic. So I will always uh, analyze the data. I'll always analyze the guidance from the state, from our governor, from the medical professionals. And if we have to change course, we will. The next section is our testing operations of our staff and our schools. Very quickly, I, I want our community to understand. I want our staff to understand, much like um, the students, but staff are, are typically at much less numbers, okay? So you could see the minimum of, of required tests. For our staff that are watching, understand, this ranges from one to three staff members per day, depending on the school, because your nurses will set up scheduling based on the random sample from those of you who gave consent, from the random sample that uh, we uh, utilize uh, through that um, selection process in Microsoft Excel and will provide the names to the nurses and nurses have already been trained and know to call our staff down. Staff participation also is optional and I, I, our community should understand that, our staff should understand that. And our staff to a very high degree community have said absolutely I'm, I'm volunteering um, to, to do the testing. Our staff have been wonderful during this process. They continue to be wonderful. As much as they're stressed, as much as they see that this is a challenge, they have continued to be wonderful during this process. Once again, the procedures, uh, staff uh, will be contacted by the nurse, nurse's office. And then the difference is staff, um, you'll actually have to complete when we send out that you've been selected you'll actually have to complete a Google form to complete all the data that needs to be uploaded to Eclair, the Eclair system. So for our elementary and secondary students, folks, you're not gonna have to complete all that data and all that information because we have that 
and infant and campus already. There's just a few questions that the nurses will ask you. Staff, there are uh, several questions that you'll have to fill out for data so that your information can be uh, uploaded as a uh, test that took place. If it's negative, staff can return to their normal duties. If it's positive, staff will be sent home. And more information is actually going to be coming out to staff about this procedure. So please watch out for it. So folks, we're in the frequently asked questions section now. And just to reiterate, I've talked about this in the video about data collection and data upload. Um, students, secondary and elementary, parents are going to have to give us very little data when you're there. Make sure you have your ID, make sure parents in that section when you're signing up, make sure you're putting the parent name in that section on the sign up, okay, and follow those details to the, to the uh, T, but we have your children's information in Infant Campus. Staff, when you receive the notice, you're going to have, once again, you're going to get that Google form. We need a little bit more information from you um, to make sure that we can upload it to the state. But I, I have uh, in the first question for frequently asked questions, how do I change withdrawal consent? Because I've heard this a lot this week. And I've addressed this that the most recent upload of your consent will be what we go by. So if you say no in your most recent, we're going to go by that. If you say yes, but folks, we really need, that's the partnership. We need, we've changed our procedures as a district to make it so parents are with our youngest students. Um, we've shown you the videos. These tests are not invasive. Um, and we really need that partnership as many to come along because really I, I've received this type of scenario. A family said, well, you know, what about the families that aren't doing it? How is that really fair? That's why I really need to encourage you, please. We need all of our families doing it. Um, the higher the number, the better. Um, when time slots fill up at that elementary level, then time slots are full. We do not need you coming uh, during that. Maybe you could do it for the next month when you're signing up for time slots. That's going to give us our random sampling. Um, so folks, really focus on that. And the more that we can do, the more that we can have consent, the, the better. But we are going to stick pretty firm to that 20% and only hitting that 20% per month. And if our designation changes or the guidance changes and we need to elevate that, escalate that, then we will. Can parents bring siblings? We've said this already. Yes, you can bring a sibling on those Wednesdays we're talking about, not to our high schools or secondary schools. We're talking about to the Wednesday sign up. But we encourage you, if you can avoid it, to avoid it because it, we, we have process and procedure to hit our 20% but we're not going to turn anybody away with their siblings as long as their sibling is a Kenton student. Can I be tested if I'm symptomatic or in order to return from quarantine? Folks, this is a no. Symptomatic individuals should never be on school grounds. We, we have to stay consistent with that and our testing is 100% random. The district is not a medical provider or a clinic providing testing to anyone who's symptomatic. So remember, we stay in our zones. Our expertise, our is education and we are not a medical provider we receive this lsl we receive this test these tests so that we could perform this testing in order to make sure that we're following the guidance so i need everyone to be respectful of that if you are symptomatic work with your primary care physician work with the erie county department of health to go receive the the various testings uh, that are offered in to our public how often will students and staff be tested? Students and staff cannot be tested more than one time per month. And the more people that sign up, the more that we'll have different options for people. And hopefully we're out of these zones and out of testing in the future. That's the hope. If I do not consent to testing, can my child still attend school? Absolutely, they can still attend school. But once again, we really need your help, folks. I can't beg enough. Uh, we need your help. We need more people signing up for the testing. Will universal pre-K students be tested? Um, so the testing is all school-based. Remember, these are we're following guidance. We're not a medical provider, we're guidance. So because the places that universal pre-K are inside of schools with BEDS codes, then yes, universal pre-K will be tested. That's at Holmes and Franklin. They'll at least be in the random sampling. Not all of them will be tested. Maybe all of them will be tested. It'll be based on that random sampling and sign up. 
UPK students at Kenmore Middle will not be participating in testing. That's through the uh, YMCA program. I just want to reiterate that, uh, like our other UPK, but we do not have a BEDS code at Kenmore Middle. Remember, we're following the guidance, why we're doing the testing, and that is, uh, that is uh, following um, suit. Will testing numbers be reported to the community? And this is yes. Every week during this weekly connection now, we will have a, um, a section that we are going to report any positive tests as a result of our testing to the community. So next week, we will start with our staff at the elementary level, our students at the elementary level, um, and that's how we're going to be doing our, our random testing. I ask you at the end of this video, you'll, you'll receive individual elementary schools will receive that text and that guidance for sign up to please go and sign up. We can't wait. Sign up throughout the month. Remember, it's over those four days, every Wednesday, and pick a time slot. So, folks, to reiterate and to close, because this was a very long weekly connection, has a lot of data. This will stay up. Um, we will also break this down by section so that you can fast forward or only go to the section that you want to rewatch if you have any questions or you want further clarity or you just want to hear a certain section again. Uh, that will be done on our website. Uh, Mr. Finelli is going to make sure that it's almost bookmarked that you could hit these different sections based on what you want to watch again. And I want to close with the fact that remember we are staying objective and following the guidance. Objective and following the guidance. I'm trusting the professionals that are advising us the medical professionals, that it is safe. I'm looking at the data that schools are a very safe place to be, and we will continue to proceed in that fashion as a Kenton community. I am also reserving the right that if that data, and, and folks, please bear with me through this, if that data ever shows me at any given time that we have to pull the plug, we will, and we will move back to remote. I know that it is very inconvenient for um, our families, our students, and our staff. But folks, we do know this. In-person instruction, nothing can replace it. Our, our, our faculty and staff are doing a tremendous job with remote learning. But nothing can beat in-person instruction, both emotionally for our students and educationally for our students. And getting us back to in-person instruction has always got to be the priority. And why? Because we're educators. And I know and I'm confident in our educators in Canton. Thank you very much for listening this evening. Thank you very much for always being Canton strong. Thank you for being Canton proud. And in this uncertain time, we will help each other move Canton forward. Thank you, community.